And welcome back to another episode of Casey Campbell's video cast. And joining me right now, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, <laughs> head football coach Rod Beaton is joining us. Uh, coach, what's going on, man? Hey, uh, great to see you, Casey, man. Appreciate the, the kind words there. Um, just trying to hang in there, you know. Uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things going on right now, man. And, um, you know, just trying to, you know, do everything we can on this end to, you know, stay healthy and stay safe and, you know, take care of everything we got going on. Um, you know, um, has online school started in Pinckney and what's the plan with all that? Yeah. Uh, you know, we started rolling stuff out this week, um, you know, to get kids up and running with our, our continuous learning plan. Uh, you know, really excited about it, man. So, you know, get kids back into it a little bit and, you know, try to keep them engaged and, and keep rolling uh, the best we can. It's, it's been interesting, um, but uh, we're excited about it. You know, our, I feel like our district has done a tremendous job uh, doing the best they can with a short window of time to, to roll everything out and uh, ready to really hit the ground running uh, with everything next week. Um, football wise, um, how are you dealing with that? I mean, I know you, I know you've been talking with the kids and checking in with players. Yeah. It's, dealing with that? It, man, I, you know, it's hard, you know, when you're trying to do everything you do with uncertainty and not being able to, you know, be in the weight room and, you know, really strengthen and develop in those relationships and the things that, you know, are at the key or at the heart, you know, of, of what we do in our program. Uh, it's hard, right? Because you're, I mean, you're so used to being in the grind and you're so used to, you know, getting after it literally every single day. And now, you know, not having that opportunity to do it, it's, uh, you know, it's a little tougher, you know, that's for sure. So uh, you're just trying to, you know, maintain and do what you can and, and make sure first and foremost that, you know, you're talking with your kids and just making sure they're okay and that their families are okay. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're, you know, staying a little bit engaged and moving around a little bit. Uh, you know, so whenever we do get the opportunity to, to get back at it, we, uh, you know, we can, you know, try to get rolling. Um, I mean, have you checked in with pretty much everybody? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, just, like I said, constantly just staying in touch, you know what I mean? And just saying hi and, you know, seeing how they're doing and, uh, you know, reinforcing the fact that we want them to, you know, really take advantage of this continuous learning plan we have and, you know, also stay in touch with us as well. You know, make sure that they're informed and make sure they know exactly what's going on. And, uh, you know, so everything is, you know, like I said, you're, you're trying to, you know, hit a moving target sometimes, it feels like. So you can only do so much, you know, at some time. And you're trying to, you know, take away from not doing too much, right, um, you know, with the circumstances. But uh, like I said, everything we're trying to do, man, is just, keep everybody healthy, you know, make sure everybody hopefully is safe. If they need anything, we're here for them and, you know, doing everything we can to have things in place. So whenever we do get the opportunity uh, to get back at football, you know, we're ready to, you know, get rolling. Um, the SEC made a couple changes a few weeks ago with the, with the division as, as many people have known, Ipsy communities going over to the other side. Um, what do you think about the new changes? And then, Having Dexter going over to the other side as well um, in the following year after next year and all the other changes with that. What do you think about all the SEC division changes? Well, I mean, it's, you know, um, you know, with some of those schools and their size and the things that they're doing, you know, um, you know, playing. And you, you look at the way the new divisions came and those types of things. And, you know, um, I think, you know, it's, it's good for those schools. I mean, they're, you know, looking to, you know, what they need to do for them. You know, and get their you know schedule set up. I mean, you know, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of what it is. Um, you know, for us, I mean, you know, we we hopefully you know still want to be able to at some point down the road, you know, play a Dexter, you know, like we had a nice little thing going with those guys. You know, Coach Jacobs and I get along really really well, and you know the programs get along and. You know, so, you know, something can come up where we can, you know, make it happen. And, um, but it's good for those guys, honestly. Uh, it's going to create some more opportunities for us uh, to go out and get, you know, some other games. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have a little bit more, um, I guess, freedom, you might say, uh, with some of our scheduling now in terms of, you know, being able to go out and get some more schools and do different things. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're happy for those guys and what they're doing. And, 
you know, we're going to look at ours as, a, as an opportunity to, you know, get out and see some other schools, uh, you know, once uh, the, the red uh, is up to eight schools. Yeah. Um, if football season does get going, pr um, pretty cool of where you're going to start it. Um, yeah. The, the Battle of the Big House um, in Ann Arbor, um, the third Livingston County team to do it. I've been at all of them and that they've had, I mean, the first two years at Brighton and then, of course, Howell two years ago. How exciting is it to play in the big house? Oh, it's, I tell you, man, you know, when the opportunity came up, <clears throat> you know, it was something that we were, you know, ready to jump on and, uh, man, we're, we're excited, honestly. It's, it's uh, one of those, you know, iconic, you know, aspects of college football and, um, you know, for us to have the opportunity to, to go there and be in that venue, um, you know, and see, you know, understanding the history and everything else that's happened in that building and, you know, for us to be able to, to be in there and play in that game. And uh, it's, and I tell you, we're excited. <laughs> we got uh, a really, really good opponent, uh, you know, that we're going up against. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, those guys are, are, are tough and, and good and boy, they got some players. Uh, so we, we definitely got our hands full, but you know, the opportunity for our, for our kids and for our families and for our community and for everybody here in Pinckney, to, you know, be able to go to Ann Arbor and, and get it to the big house and watch our kids play. And, um, you know, it's something these guys are going to remember for the rest of their life, you know? Yeah. Um, I know, I know everyone's kind of talking about the, 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 the football season really up in the air. We really don't know what's going to happen by the, by this time when we are in maybe August, September, what's the sense of the unknown and is it, does it really, you just take it by ear and see how it goes or you kind of worry about that stuff or are the kids worried? That's the hardest part. I think, I mean, honestly, it's hard, right? It's the unknown is probably the worst part of the whole thing. Right. I mean, if you had an idea or had a, you know, some directive that was saying, Hey, we're going to start here and we're going to do this and it's going to go right. You, you could wrap your head around that. You could start to plan and do things, but when you, when you don't have definitive answers and you don't have something concrete, then all the different scenarios start coming up, right? And then you're starting to think, and then you're starting to map out and plan out, okay, well, if we start here, this is how it would look. If we start here, this is what we'd like to do, or this is how we're going to adjust if we do this. So it's kind of, you know, uh, I got a little notebook here <laughs> where I've kind of, you know, written out uh, a multitude of different scenarios uh, and how we would, you know, try to approach that when, uh, whenever those situations uh, whenever we get something concrete, definitive, you know. Have you had any coaches meetings with the other with the other coaches? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely touching base with coaches, man, and communicating. Uh, tr like I said, trying to stay on track as much as we we normally would, uh, and what we would do just as if we were in school, right? So we're trying to do that. Um, you know, the Zoom technology and all that kind of stuff has been great uh, to be able to do it. You know, we have a lot of other resources built within our program so we can, you know, communicate with each other and, and, you know, get resources out. And so, like I said, we're trying to maintain some some normalcy, uh, you know, as much as we can. But yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely been a little challenging. And uh, with Zach Sealer come, um, I think he just uh, signed with, I think, the Dolphins, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's it like to have someone, you know, from your town in the NFL? I know Brighton had that with um, with Drew Henson a few years, with uh, uh, maybe a decade ago. I'm still keeping in touch with Drew. But what's it like to have someone in the NFL from Pinkney? And I know that he's been back. I think he was back in town, but one of the last basketball games mm -hmm. that you had. And uh, Yeah, we had, a, we had a Zach Sealer night uh, at one of our, you know, last basketball games before things got, you know, crazy. Um, where we basically just recognize, you know, we recognize that for everything that he's done, um, you know, for not only for us, but what he's done at Ferris and, you know, what he's now doing in the NFL and, uh, you know, brought him and his family back. And uh, it was a really, really cool night. Uh, you know, we didn't retire his jersey. Uh, you know, we basically are using his jersey as a motivator, uh, you know, for our, our, the young guys in our program to want to be the next number 74. And, uh, you know, that that's a tremendous honor. And, you know, we got to, a pretty good one right now, uh, you know, rocking the 74. You know, we've had a couple other really good, you know, over the 74. So it's really established itself in the program. And, um, you know, but it, like I said, man, it's, it's sometimes it's almost surreal, right? When you think about it, that, that he's doing what he's doing. And, 
Uh, you know, the best part about it, honestly, man, is, is Zach is one of the most humble people, you know, I've, I've ever met. I mean, it's when you meet him and talk to him and spend time with him, he's, you don't even really sometimes think that he's an NFL guy because he's so laid back, so easy going, um, you know, absolutely loves picking football, you know, loves what we do, loves coming back, loves talking to the kids and, and seeing those things when he comes back around, man. So, um, you know, and, and, and him and his family, you know, are the same way. His family is just this amazing group of people and, um, you know, totally all about what we do here, man. So that, that's what even makes it more special. And um, this year you got a chance to uh, have a foreign exchange student live with you. Is she still there? Is he or she still there? Yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, she, she's a, man, she's an absolute sweetheart. And, um, you know, she actually, um, you know, is from Spain, you know, so that Spain was one of the hotspots in Europe. So, yeah. um, you know, it was nice to be able to, you know, have her here. And she's been tremendous, man. She's, she fit right in. She's a, She's, you know, she's another member of our family, man. She's, you know, she's a daughter to me and on our family and uh, she's been great. She's still here. So it's been, it's been great to have her uh, with everything we got going on. When is she, I know, I know, when is she scheduled to go back and, or could that be delayed possibly with the. Uh, yeah, we just travel? don't even know right now, man. I mean, it's just one of those things that are again, kind of up in the air. So, <laughs> you know. Um, all right, coach. It's been a, it's been a fun. Uh, thanks for taking this time to talk with us. And I'm sure we're going to be talking with you uh, as August comes around and maybe uh, it's going to be probably totally different when, when that yeah. August is when August. Yeah. Comes. Yeah. Hopefully we can get, uh, you know, Casey's camp tour to come back by and uh, you know, see us and, you know, hopefully in August when we're rocking and rolling and um, you know, thanks for the opportunity to, to chat. It was great to, great to talk with you and, uh, good luck with all the, the new endeavors. Okay, my man. Yeah, yeah, man. It, and we can also do the virtual tour. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. This is going to be. Fun. <laughs> this might be. Uh, this, this is going to be fun. So you know. Very good, I'm man. Well, good luck, Casey, man. Good luck. All right, thank you, Rod. All right, buddy. We'll see you.